In this example, we have a system of two masses, two dampers, and one spring. The input to the system is a force R of T that is being applied to mass M1. And the output of the system is V1, that is the speed of mass M1. We are interested in the response of the system V1 when a force R of T is applied to the system. In other words, we're interested in the transfer function between R and V1. In order to find out a transfer function, we first need to model the system, find the equations of motion in the frequency domain, and then look for the relation between R and V. Let's start with mass M1. I have here the free body diagram of mass M1. The input force is R of T, and you have two forces resisting motion. Assuming that a mass M1 moves to the right with a speed V1, and let's call the speed of mass M2 V2. As the mass moves to the right, we have two resistive forces due to these two dampers. The first one here will be B1, which is the magnitude of the viscous, which is the viscous friction of that dumper, multiplied by the relative velocity across the ends of that damper, that is V1 minus V2. And the second force depends on damper whose coefficient of viscous friction is B2, and the magnitude is simply V2 times V1. See, it is the other end of that damper is fixed. We now know that the sum of all forces acting on this mass equals to m1 times the acceleration of mass m1. The sum of forces will be negative b1 v1 minus v2 minus v2 v1 plus r of t. And this is equal to mass m1 times its acceleration. Since we're dealing with velocities here, we can simply write v1 dot v1 of t, of course. Now that we have the balance of the forces, we can take the Laplace transform of this expression. It will give negative v1 times v1 of s plus v1 v2 of s minus v2 v1 of s plus R of S equals to M1 V1 of S times S because of the derivative. We can now move all these components except of R of S to the right side of the equation and factor all V1s. So if you factor V1 of S, we have here M1 S, v1 negative v1 v1 goes to the right becomes positive plus v1 negative v2 v1 also becomes positive on the other side of the equation so this is plus v2 all multiplied by v1 negative minus v1 v2 of s equals to r of s now that we found the equation of motion of mass m1 that I've written here, we can do the same for mass m2. Mass m2 has two forces acting on it. The first one is the one due to the damper b1. The magnitude of that force is written here is b1 times v1 minus v2. On the other side of that mass, we have a spring having a stiffness of k. The force applied by that spring is k times the displacement. The displacement as a function of v2 is k times the integral of v2 dt, v2 being the speed again. Now that we have all forces acting on the mass, we can write the equation of motion as the sum of masses equals to m2 times its acceleration. This gives v1, v1 minus v2 minus k integral of v2 dt equals to m2 times its acceleration, the derivative of its speed, 
that's V2 dot. The Laplace transform of this expression gives B1 times V1 of S minus B1 V2 of S minus K over S, where 1 over S represents the integral of V2 of S. And this is equal to M2 V2 of S times S. We can now move all V2s to the right side of the equation and keep V1 on this side and factor out V2 for the terms that have V2 multiplying it. V2 of S multiplies M2 times S. And we move these two terms here now to the right side. They become plus B1 and plus K over S. And this is equal to B1 V1 of S. Here we have the expression for the second mass. We can now attempt to combine these two expressions and find a relation between R of S and V1 of S input and output of the system. Once we found the second expression of motion for mass M2, we can explicitly obtain an expression for the velocity V2 if you divide this side of the equation by the entire term that multiplies V2 of S. And here we have now the relation between V2 and V1. Taking the first expression now and replacing V2 here gives V1 of S times M1 S plus B1 plus B2 minus B1 squared divided by M2 S plus B1 plus K over S all multiplied by V1 of S and this equals to R of S. These two terms multiplied are multiplied by V1 of S. We can move V1 of S to the right side of the equation. We are left with the, these two terms. Expanding this part of the equation now gives M2S plus B1 plus K over S. This term multiplies the original term here, M1S plus B1 plus B2 times M2S plus B1 plus K over S minus B1 squared, and this is equal to R of S divided by V1 of S. This term here is multiplied by 1 over S. We can multiply to get rid of that both sides of the equation not both sides, but the denominator and the numerator by S, divided by S. Also, if you're looking for the transfer function, we need the output divided by the input, that is V1 over R. So we need to invert this entire function. The denominator now becomes the numerator of that function, multiplied by S would be M2 S squared plus B1 S plus K all divided by this m1 s plus b1 plus b2 now i can multiply the entire term by s m2 s squared plus b1 s plus k minus b1 squared times s this is equal to v1 of s divided by r of s input output divided by the input of the system and this is basically the transfer function
between R and V1.